All right, so if you guys could open up this file, it's called session, back from session three, Rhino building into Revit. After. Um, we could start uh, working just from this file that we built the other day. All right, so um, just uh, today we're going to work, uh, work more towards visualization and i um, going to start out just showing you ways that you guys can do um, some quick kind of dirty uh, just rhino renders, which are just great for, let's say, like you're in the middle of a process of putting together like a, a, a process, er, like early conceptual uh, presentation, and you just need some quick uh, visualizations, nothing that has a lot of atmosphere or anything. Um, let's, you can just use this thing called Rhino Render real quick, which I'll just show you. Uh, I think some of you experimented with it already uh, in your uh, in some of your assignments, but uh, I'll just give it a shot here. So um, right now we have uh, this form right here it's under a, a layer called 3D Cut, and right now it's if you go over here to this uh, the circle, you'll see it's uh, and you also click on Rendered. You'll see that it renders uh, in this way because of this green thing. So let's click on this green circle here. And uh, has everyone uh, actually got that correct file open? Um, so you'll notice this is uh, this is pretty crazy here. I mean, you could uh, mess around, change the color, um, and if you want to get a little uh, crazier too and get some more atmosphere going, um, you could uh, add texture maps and let's uh if you go into um if you go into your um the L folder under textures or uh, in that same uh, file folder there's a for the CE 133 233 class there's a file folder called textures and you can go in there And there's just a whole bunch of uh, random uh, pictures that we can use to uh, give it some texture. Um, so let's just choose uh, this one real quick, or whichever one you want. And let's turn this color back down to um, to gray, or just some color randomly. And uh, let's also give it a bump that is the exact same file. In the folder, in, in that file folder. Excuse me. On the L drive. On the L drive, yeah, under CE one thirty three two thirty three. Let's see. Didn't transfer. Thank you for making sure that worked. Uh, let 
There we go. They should uh, be on there now. Can you guys see them now? There's a, f a folder called Textures under the CE133 to 233. So, to go in there, you can uh, um, go back here into um, into the Rhino file, and you can pretty much choose uh, choose the file going to the textures right here and let's uh, choose this one again and for the uh, bump map over here you should choose the, the same exact one and you can uh, really give it some uh, depth as well which you'll see and so you'll see it comes up and just gives you a just in the in the uh, screen here, it just gives you a quick view of it, and uh, you can um, click on the object and go over here and, and uh, or type uh, F three for properties and go to texture mapping, and you can do um, custom uh, changes to it. So you, right now it's set to surface. You can change it to a box and. Uh, change uh, just the sizes of it uh, or, or another thing you can do if you don't want to mess around with all of these uh, settings if you want to make this smaller or something like that you can just go into this and change the tiling on the texture and it's kind of hard to get used to but tiling you see like instead of this just puts like one version of the object over it if you change it to five you'll see that it repeats it and it makes it smaller uh, so it's more uh, repetition and let's do the same with uh, the bump map and so now we can uh, go here into render real quick up in the top and uh, just uh, go to render properties first and you'll see there's um, all kinds of settings you can mess around with right here um, it's just gonna render the viewport size you can make it a you know a little uh, nicer rendering and turn the anti-aliasing up anti-aliasing is just uh, gonna let you know like if, if you do include if you do decide to include curves or lines in your rendering it makes them much sharper the higher your anti-aliasing is but let's just keep that at normal right now and uh, the ambient light, um, pretty much keep it as it is unless you want to make it way lighter. Um, if you change this, like the whole, if you drag this up and make this closer, the closer to white, like the lighter the whole image will be in general. And um, so let's just uh, do a rendering real quick. Uh, and so you can just type in render. And we'll bring up just a... Uh, a version of it and you see like it didn't really um, change it all that much so let's go back into that render properties and um, let's change the uh, the color of the background and let's give it uh, just a blue a blue color up top and click on bottom color right here and let's just turn that into uh, white so you'll get a, a nice uh, gradient going Oh, sorry. Um, you could just go up here to uh, render. Type in render properties. Or, I mean, go to the bottom here, render properties. And you could also click in options. This uh, this is just like this whole options menu up here. So, uh, were you guys able to change the background? And let's change the ambient, make it a little lighter, just so you can see how it changes it. And let's turn the DPI up a little bit so you can see it more. And let's just try rendering again. And so you'll see that it just looks pretty much the same as what it does in the screen. So let's uh, let's add a, a new layer called lights. And lights are only going to be available 
in the shaded view so let's go to, to your shaded view and type in the command directional light see right here and you'll click a point and be able to choose this directional light and so now it's just facing kind of straight that way so let's turn the points on and you can move this around let's say let's type in move and vertically so you can get some angle on it so now there will be a, a direct light coming in there at that angle and let's also uh, let's click on that again after you, after you hit escape and turn the points off and go down here to light and you can change the shadow intensity because right now it will cast like really black and white shadows so let's just put that at like 60 or something like that and you can also change the color of the light if you want but let's just keep it simple right now so let's uh let's actually throw a in addition throw a, a plane down so we can see it cast a shadow so just type in rectangle and then you can do a planar surface from that so let's go back to um, render this and see what happens now hope it didn't render with shadows or anything There you go. You can see that now it has uh, some shadows and everything. So just quick, dirty sketches. But let's real quick before we uh, move on from that. Let's uh, let's also t change one of these. So type in extract surface. And click on just one of these surfaces and hit enter. And what you can do is change uh, properties just for a single option uh, instead of doing a whole layer you can just do a single object so go over to material here and you can go down to basics so it does it itself and let's put some transparency map on it let's turn off the texture and bump and just throw a transparency on it and let's choose one of these uh, these options that look like a perforated panel and you can uh, modify that to like, say, and let's check out just how it looks and rendered so now there's a whole different kind of uh, surface right there and let's also go back to this 3d cut visualization and let's turn this bump up so you can really get some some feel for it so put it on 100 percent and let's just see how this renders out now I guess this uh this bump isn't isn't really doing much so let's uh let's change it to a different a uh, different uh texture like one of these uh, sandstone ones and do the same for your bump so it'll be kind of trial and error just for getting this and let's try that again hmm, doesn't seem to be giving me much of a result in terms of that no um, I'll all uh, all I did was I I typed uh, or I extracted the surface. Did you get that part? Yeah. And then pretty much you just click on the surface itself, and over here on properties you can go, go from object down to material, okay. and you can select basic, and then you pretty much have the same options right down here. Yeah.
I'm actually going to turn this light down a little bit more. Let's see if that changes it at all. Hmm, still doesn't seem to do much. Hmm. Well, usually um, this, uh, but anyways, this is just for quick, dirty renderings, and um, it's not really going to give you. Uh, you're not going to get a lot of great atmosphere out of uh, just Rhino renders, but you'll get just a good rep representation of something f for um, for like a quick review or something like that, where you'll you see how fast that renders. It's very quick. Um, later on, Glenn will uh, take you through more about uh, rendering in Revit, um, which uh, you can do if we. Uh, from those files we created earlier, we can go and do that later. But um, right now, I'm going to teach you. Uh, there's a great program called 3D Max, and you can really uh, get a lot more atmosphere and really a, just a lot of great texture and and kind of layers with this program. Um, it's a lot more complicated than just this little rendering uh, I just showed you. But um, you can use um, Rhino or Revit and uh, export. Uh, files to this program 3d max um, to really give some really good uh, and bring in those files and render in a, a much better like kind of a more powerful program uh, for rendering because uh, just like with uh, with uh, modeling and building information modeling Rhino doesn't isn't really good at that um, and so 3d max is much better with that and Revit's a little bit has a little bit better uh, program for rendering as well than, than Rhino does by itself um, but uh, it definitely has some limitations, and it's it's very simple. Uh, but it's also that the best best thing is it's pretty easy to use. So uh, right now, so we have these kind of uh, simple forms. So let's just let's just throw in a um, just a regular box so we can render all the see how to render all these different kinds of objects. Um, so what you have to do in order to bring something into 3D Max is you have to turn it into a mesh. And um, meshes are uh, a little uh, different because uh, they, they aren't based on the same like planar NURB modeling is what, what uh, Rhino usually models in. So um, we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to convert these all to meshes and uh, export them uh, so that uh, you can see that like, and transfer it into 3D Max. So let's start with this box I just created. Um, uh, you can click in this command that says mesh and just with it selected and it'll bring up this dialog box and um, let's go to simple controls and you can um, you can mess around this is a pretty simple simple form so you'll see that you can do fewer polygons and the way it's gonna do it is gonna turn it into a mesh and divide it up into uh, just kind of subsurfaces and it just meshes it all together so you can click on preview you'll see how it does this and if you go up here and drag this to more polygons you'll, you'll see that it just has a, a different variety so for a more complicated form like this one behind you're going to want to do more and more polygons in order to actually give it the accurate uh, representation but for this form let's turn it down to, to fewer polygons and you'll see that after you do it it still keeps your um, it keeps your um, polygon actually selected. So let's just type in hide and hide that polygon from the the NURB version, the Rhino version. And you'll see now that you click on this, it's now a mesh. And so in shaded view, you can see all the extra lines. And if we go to rendered view, you'll see that it is just a, a normal box and it will show up like that in 3D Max or any other program that you wish to bring it into as a mesh. So now that one comes out pretty simple. Let's uh let's join this object back together. And so let's try and mesh this object. See if you preview with fewer objects, it's gonna it's gonna bring it up like this. But I would recommend going to more polygons because if if you do it with uh, fewer polygons, and let's hide the 
version again and go to the rendered view. It looks all right, but there's some distortion here because you didn't uh, because we didn't turn up the uh, the polygon rating enough. So we're gonna turn uh, we're gonna undo that and let's mesh it again, but with more polygons. And in fact, you can go into this this thing called detailed controls if you really want to um, if you really want to uh, turn up the amount of uh, the amount of uh, like faces it will have, and really make it a, a very organic object. If it's very, uh, you know, if it has a lot of curves, you want to do this. Um, right now, its minimum edge length is, is set, to, set to very small, but its maximum edge length is is still uh, undefined. So, if you want to say that it can only be 0.1 feet for the maximum length of an edge, you'll see what that does. And it will take a while to mesh, and sometimes uh, when you create a really complex form, it will it will take a while. And don't worry, that's a uh, that's pretty normal. Um, but if it's taking too long, like this probably is, you can hit escape. And let's do that again, and do that with not 0.1, but something like 0.5 on the maximum edge length. and you'll see that it comes in really small but once we go to the rendered view it comes in exactly the way that we had originally intended so it's it's a I don't know it's a, it's a better way to do it for complex forms so while we have this out let's uh... let's also uh, turn go back into 3d Where did our forms go? Oh, I guess this comes in all as one form right here now. Let's um let's extract this uh or extract these surfaces. Extract surface. <coughs> and click on these ones right here. Because we're gonna make these uh, the curtain wall. And why don't you you can type in join and let's change this back to this layer. Change object layer. And now we have it back to uh being because um you want to make sure that you have the layers all defined uh when you are creating a file to export. Uh because when you bring them into 3D Max, you'll see that they're going to be divided by layer, not just by object. Um, and that's also the way you're going to assign materials and other properties to them. So there's these are on 3D slab layer. This is curtain wall. This is just 3D wall. And let's also extract the surface again. Get that and change that to. Uh, well, wait, let's just do it to the same 3D curtain wall. And so now let's uh, select all of. You can select all of this and just type in mesh. But let's turn this back up to uh, to one foot, so that you can really get uh, these forms aren't too complex. Um, so these forms are these forms aren't too complex. Um, but you still want to be able, especially with these curves, to be able to have a few bit of meshes on them. So let's uh, just, you can see that you can mesh it all together here. And you can, afterwards, you can type in hide. And you can kind of review, and you'll see, well, one of them, some of them had a problem right there. So as you can see, that is probably not good if you can see that extra layer right there. Oops. So let's uh let's undo that and let's just do the outside first. And that looks pretty good. So let's hide the polygons. And just 
when you go to render view you can review it and see if it looks correct and it looks pretty good from here looks, it looks like there's no uh, serious edges um, and let's try and do these uh, do these forms again Alright, let's turn off the 3D 3D wall here in order to select these. So let's mesh and these are uh, less complex. So let's go back to the simple controls and just do uh, keep it where it is and you preview it and it looks pretty good just that way. So let's click OK and we can hide these again go back to rendered and this looks pretty good this time now there's no random weird things going on because every once in a while when you have some objects depending on how you built them when you mesh it you'll have some errors so you just want to make sure you, re you review it and make sure that it looks correct um, so now let's turn this 3d wall back on and now you notice pretty much oh let's also um, scale this type in scale 1d so let's have a so we have a ground surface here, and you'll notice under 3D we don't really have a ground surface layer. So let's just create a new one. It's called ground, and we'll change this to that layer. So now we just have a, a couple of groups of things that we can bring into 3D Max to start rendering. Um, but first, actually, I almost forgot for this ground layer, we need to mesh that as well and you can go, since that's just a flat surface, you can tell it to be fewer polygons and hide that again, so now if you select everything here actually let's uh, turn off anything that's on 2D or default it should be all meshes here but for some reason when I select it, oh yeah there we go, it's 10 meshes now um, but let's say you have some other random things in the file which you don't want to, uh, which you don't want to bring in. Um, you can always type in if underscore cell. So you select mesh. Is what it's uh, is a the command you can type in, and it will select only the meshes. I think there's also a way you can do that over here but uh, under edit you go to select objects and uh, for some reason there's a there's no instant of mesh but just so that's why I always just type in select mesh and I'll give you all those now real quick let's uh, before we we do this let's let's show selected and let's uh, let's show this um, this form right here the, the curtain wall um, and let's uh let's just move it so we can I wish I had done this before but let's just move it over if you type in move and then click the, the button on just a random location and let's say like 1000 feet you'll see that it, well you can move around in like a 1000 foot radius and if you hold shift you can go along an axis and then click and so now that's a thousand feet away right there and let's zoom in on that and let's uh... let's create another layer that's called mullions and let's turn that layer as our current and i'm just going to do a box real quick so we can set up a pretty easy pattern um, oh, I'm going to go back into shaded view so this is easier. Um, so now we're, we're just going to draw a curtain wall pattern on this form and do it. We're gonna just going to do it pretty simply, um, but you can really customize this. You could like we've done in earlier times where you could map all kinds of patterns onto the surface or something like that. Um, and what we can do is you can just have lines and you can export them into 3D Max, and you can give them thickness. In fact, you can do that with surfaces as well. You can
bring them into 3D Max just as a plain surface and give them thickness just in, in rendering. Not, not, it all we'll do is represent it as a thickness or like an actual object when rendered, uh, not as an actual mesh. So, um, but right now we're just going to uh, uh, give a uh, we're going to uh, give this a curtain wall pattern. So um, there's a command called contour. And what it's going to do is almost like uh, what you would picture like doing in a top topographical map. It's going to contour the object based on a certain direction. So let's say you, you want to just go vertically and you wanted to have uh, a curtain wall pa panel every 10 feet. Let's so you actually let's undo that. So you have this object selected and type in contour. And so now it's telling you to select the contour base point. And the reason I created this box right here is so that I have a vertical surface on which to reference. Um, so I'm going to click at the bottom and then up to this vertical point. And now it's going to ask you for the distance between contours. And let's just type in 10 feet. And it will give you these lines right here. So let's just join those together so they're all one object. And then you have this. So another thing you could also do is get a little crazy. And let's say you wanted to have a, a different kind of crazy pattern on there. You could just select random directions to go with, let's say, like diagonally. And also, let's go five feet. And now you have a, a pretty crazy pattern there, and let's join those. So now you just have this kind of crazy pattern right here. You could also do more regular pattern. Um, let's say you wanted to, uh, let's undo that. Let's say, let's explode this. Let's say you just want it to be, you know, a total normal pattern. So let's contour it this way. And you just have a, a more regular pattern there. Um, but just for uh, all, all uh, intents and purposes, let's, uh, let's give it a crazy pattern just so you can see it work out. So there's all kinds of other ways you could uh, do this too. You could always just get on here and draw. And it's great because you have an actual plane to reference with. So you can always have things uh, like a reference point uh, as opposed to just drawing in space since you're just drawing on a surface. Um, so, and, I mean, there's all, there's all kinds of other tools you can use, but um, let's just keep it like that for right now. And um, let's um, move these uh, back over 1,000 feet back into the correct spot. You'll notice that Rhino remembered that the last thing I moved was a thousand feet, and hold down Shift, and let's type in Z and then S for zoom selected, and you'll see we go right back here. And let's, since we already have this poly surface here, um, one of the things that you find is make sure you can always go through and and it will show you the different kinds of things that you're selecting, and we can hide that so that we just can select everything here. Uh, but let's say you did have, let's uh, say you had a whole bunch of other things that you didn't want in your export. So let's get ready to export here for 3D Max. Um, so we're going to once again type select mesh, and now we just have all these meshes. But we also wanted to bring in these these mullions. So let's just go over here and select all the objects in that layer. And now we can uh, just type in export. And I'm going, and you guys aren't going to do this because you're going to waste a whole bunch of saves on your Rhino. So I'll just save it to the the folder. Um, but the best way to to bring in uh, stuff to 3D Max, you can either do a 3DS, but I found that an AutoCAD uh, just a DWG, which is a, a three a way you can do a 3D mesh as a DWG, it tends to work the best. Um, so let's just. Uh, this to the desktop 
just gonna uh, call it I know exports to 3d max and it'll bring up a box here and um, there's a, just like uh, before there's all kinds of options you can do and I technically usually go with default for this process and uh, so you'll see it working here now it's been successfully saved so let's go back to my desktop I'm gonna copy that over for you guys So now that will be available there. Um, so now we're going to, uh, if we have time, actually do we think we uh, should go into Revit and we'll just do 3D Max next time. It's probably the best way, unless we want to have them try and install right now. Glenn, what do you think? Yeah, okay. Um, think we should try and have them install 3D Max right now, or it would be probably just better to uh, go into take a break and go into Revit now. Sure, let's do it that way. Yeah, we do that. I think uh, we're just going to take a break and uh, we'll get into really bringing it into 3D Max next week because um, uh, I want to make sure that all these machines have it so we don't spend half the class trying to install it. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you want to take like a five minute break right now, uh, Glenn, when you come back, Glenn's going to uh, uh, take you through uh, rendering in, in Revit, which you've, probably most of you already might know, but I think there's some people in the class who don't, so. And a new product called Showcase. Oh, yeah, and a new product called Showcase, which is real-time rendering. Yep. I guess, which I guess means you can update pretty much in, you know, like, it will constantly update the rendering as you change the model, kind of. It's, it, you'll just throw materials right at it, and kind of, like, that renders, like, immediately. It's pretty cool. Right, interesting.